meiner Maßgabe folgen, dann bitte ich Sie jetzt allmählich die Plätze einzunehmen. In Kürze beginnt unsere... So, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, take your seats uh, because uh, we're going to start uh, our event. Prego tutti a prendere posto perché fra poco... We have a very intensive agenda, so please uh, let's try and be on time. Herzlich willkommen, meine Damen und Herren, zum Tag der Übergabe der Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to the uh, official event uh, where we will have uh, the um, passage of the uh, baton uh, from France uh, to the provinces of Trento and Bolzano. My name is Andreas Pfeiffer, and I will chair this event. I know that uh, to go beyond the borders is uh, something very fascinating, and when we speak about language borders, uh, it is even more fascinating. But today we are as lucky as to have an excellent team of interpreters who will uh, translate uh, into five languages, Italian, German, uh, English, French, uh, and uh, Slovenian. So everybody can uh, speak their own language. And this will certainly help me, because uh, I will not be forced uh, to test uh, my knowledge of foreign languages, uh, because uh, apart from uh, good morning or good afternoon, uh, I cannot uh, uh, say anything more in these uh, five languages. Uh, now, 
Sie umfasst ja den ganzen. EUSALPA ist eine internationale uh, Strategie, die uh, 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 Slowenien bis zu den uh, Nice uh, Beaches uh, 77 Millionen Inhabitanten, uh, 48 Regionen. Uh, so you will certainly agree with me that uh, it is uh, a very wide uh, territory, varied uh, territory uh, and uh, heterogeneous as well. The European Union has acknowledged the importance of this territory and has uh, set uh, the foundations uh, um, for um, targeted uh, strategies in this area. Well, it is no easy task. Uh, the uh, magazine Der Spiegel uh, in, nine, in 2017 uh, published uh, an article about life in alpine areas. It was called Bye-bye uh, uh, Heidi. You know, uh, you certainly know Heidi. And Heidi in that article was uh, a symbol of something uh, which had completely disappeared. Uh, and the last uh, sentence, uh, uh, the, la the closing sentence, uh, was uh, uh, the, the mountain is calling us. Uh, well, this is what uh, characterizes Yusalp, uh, and uh, uh, which uh, at the same time uh, is its mission, because there is this uh, heterogeneity that uh, we try to keep together and at the same time uh, to uh, level down. Well, USALP has also the task uh, of uh, uh, protecting uh, the areas uh, because we know that the Alpine regions, uh, uh, climate changes uh, are having a very strong impact. Uh, also in political terms, uh, to go beyond the borders is not always so easy. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, one uh, runs the risk uh, of uh, uh, using stereotypes, uh, not to mention Brussels, uh, where there are um, different forces uh, and where everybody tries to defend their own interests. Uh, so, also in terms of uh, Alps, uh, um, well, sometimes we do have uh, conflicts of interest, uh, but USALP is a great opportunity. It is not a new institution. It doesn't have its own uh, budget. Uh, it's not a place uh, where to um, operate one's own uh, political power, but it is a meeting place. It is a place for collaboration. As a journalist, I have to say that this uh, uh, spirit of uh, collaboration, of cooperation, um, as you may have noted, uh, um, has uh, um, increasingly um, uh, sort of disappeared uh, um, because uh, everybody has tried to defend their own interests. Uh, the uh, pandemic has uh, uh, shown uh, the emergence uh, of uh, nationalistic approaches, uh, which uh, seem to be uh, something of the past. And uh, the European Union, thanks to its uh, recovery plan, with uh, billions of euros uh, uh, allocated uh, for some uh, plans, uh, has uh, certainly uh, given uh, um, the idea of uh, uh, being uh, willing uh, to uh, promote uh, cooperation. So it is certainly a symbol of recovery, a symbol of uh, a new normality, so to speak. And for the Italian uh, presidency, a very interesting uh, uh, slogan has been chosen. Uh, that is, uh, when we came forth, uh, we once again uh, saw the stars, uh, Dante's uh, comedy, the moment when uh, Dante and uh, Virgilius uh, come out uh, of uh, hell and finally can see the stars uh, again and have the courage uh, to tackle and uh, to take up new challenges. And there is no better slogan uh, to uh, express uh, this uh, uh, spirit uh, by the two provinces of uh, Bolzano and uh, Trento. Well, I'm not uh, looking at the stars uh, currently, but I'm looking at the long list of uh, uh, guests. 
Uh, sometimes uh, in the mountains uh, we do not respect uh, protocols, uh, so I will not say hello to everybody because it is a very solemn uh, celebration. So, first of all, as uh, a convinced uh, uh, European uh, uh, representative, uh, uh, the President uh, uh, of South Tyrol, Mr. Arno Kompac, please uh, reserve uh, the applauses uh, uh, for the end. And then uh, Mr. Bizesti, local councillor for education and culture of uh, the province of uh, uh, Trento. And then uh, Joao Giraud, Secretary of State, uh, French Secretary of State uh, for uh, Rural Affairs, and then Reinhold uh, Messner. Well, we could find many names for him, uh, former European representative, former mountaineer, and then Günther Blattner, President uh, of uh, uh, Tyrol who is uh, physically present, uh, and Mr. Angelo Ciocca, Alessandro Pazza, uh, Raffaele Cattaneo, local councillor for the environment of region uh, Lombardia. And uh, uh, Lombardy already hosted the president, uh, presidency of uh, uh, USALP, and then we have uh, various other councillors. Uh, uh, the president of the council, uh, Rettorato, Philip Acham, uh, Mrs. Kunzer and then uh, many other provincial councillors, and then uh, um, uh, Rachel Cabweller, uh, Vice General Counsel in uh, Milan, Maria De Abondi uh, in uh, Trento, Alenka Mercure, uh, representative of the Alps uh, Convention, and uh, Ira Karabeki, who is uh, the South Tyrolean representative at uh, the Youth Council of USALP. And uh, um, the youth will be uh, the topic, one of the topics of today. And then there are going uh, people, uh, there are people connected with us online uh, from Carinthia, uh, Slovenia, Friuli, Venezia Giulia, uh, Switzerland, uh, which uh, belongs to USALP, although it is not a member of the European. Union. So, a very warm welcome also to the people who are uh, connected with us uh, online. And then I would like to thank uh, the uh, members of the Executive uh, uh, Council or Committee, which is uh, the um, Institute, which uh, represents uh, the nine uh, action groups uh, of USALP. Uh, from uh, which uh, then uh, um, write down uh, recommendations to be presented uh, to uh, the various uh, levels of the um, political um, area. And then we have uh, representatives of uh, universities, of research institutes, uh, um, trade unions, uh, youth organizations, uh, uh, industrial organizations, uh, the press. Uh, so a very warm welcome also to all these. Uh, people. Well, I have uh, concluded my presentation and now a collective uh, round of applause. So, jetzt richten wir aber mit technischer Hilfe. Now, that said, uh, I would like also to thank uh, the uh, technicians and uh, uh, let's try to see the stars uh, or the arms. Uh, so, I ask uh, the technicians uh, to launch uh, the uh, official video of the USALP presidency.
da haben wir sie also gesehen, die Alpen in ihrem paradiesischen so you have seen the Alps, uh, uh, a very splendid uh, place, a uh, place uh, for uh, uh, loneliness, but also innovation, spirit and development. Uh, South Tyrol and Trentino are in the heart of the Alps and are a symbol of coexistence, of uh, communication, of cross-border communication. Well, these are all ideal things, uh, positive things, uh, which, however, are threatened uh, by economic development, exploitation of resources, uh, uh, soil uh, consumption, uh, uh, traffic, uh, um, all things that you uh, perfectly uh, are aware of. And uh, these are problems which require uh, an effort, uh, uh, an effort which uh, should go beyond uh, uh, one's own uh, uh, local or national or borders and interests uh, in order to be more aware about uh, the value and the future of this uh, place. Uh, now, we would like to ask uh, the protagonists of the new presidency uh, what they uh, are going to do in order to come out and see the stars again. So I uh, ask uh, uh, Mr. Kompacher and Mr. Bizesti to come over to the floor. So Mr. Kompacher is the president of uh, uh, South Tyrol and uh, uh, Mr. Bizesti is the local councillor for education and culture of the European uh, of the Provincial uh, Council of Trento. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary of State Jean Giraud. Gentili signore e signori, benvenuti. Grazie per la vostra presenza. Grazie per esservi collegati. So, thank you so much for being uh, present. It's a great pleasure for me after these words in uh, French and Italian, to have our colleague uh, Bizesti and uh, Mr. Platter, and then uh, we have the pleasure to have uh, Mr. Reinhold uh, Messner and uh, representatives of the Arts Convention, all the uh, delegates, and, of course, the uh, members of the working groups of Action Group. Uh, so thank you so much for being here, and many thanks uh, to all those who are with us uh, online. I would like to welcome all those uh, present, uh, both uh, physically or online. We are in the heart of the Alps, uh, and we are also in the heart uh, of USALP. Fisicamente in collegamento online, do un caloroso benvenuto in Alto Adige, nel cuore delle Alpi. So again, uh, uh, in Italian, uh, uh, many thanks uh, to all those who are present here. Darf ich die Gelegenheit nutzen, um mich... Well, first of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank France for this uh, excellent uh, uh, work uh, carried out uh, during uh, these uh, uh, past two years, because uh, despite all the difficulties uh, caused uh, by the pandemic, uh, France has given a great contribution to USALP. Uh, it has uh, consolidated its uh, cooperative spirit. So thank you so much uh, for your commitment uh, and uh, for what you have done uh, during this uh, transition phase. Merci beaucoup. Many thanks to France. Per il turno italiano di presidenza di EUSALP è stato scelto come motto un famoso. Well, the slogan of uh, the Dante's comedy has been chosen. When we came forth, we once again saw the stars again, with the hope that uh, this year of presidency can be carried out under the under good uh, stars. In these uh, past two years, uh, characterized uh, by the pandemic, a message has come out. Uh, only together and only through cooperation can we tackle the 
challenges of the future. I'm convinced uh, that uh, in times of great changes, uh, it is uh, absolutely necessary to keep some uh, stability because uh, the basis uh, on which to build things uh, must be solid. Uh, and USALP uh, is uh, further demonstrating to be a very solid uh, instrument uh, in the Alps. Unser gemeinsamer Lebensraum kennzeichnet unser gemeinsamer common uh, habitat, uh, that is the Alps, uh, has always marked uh, our actions. The Alps are a very sensitive and fragile uh, ecosystem uh, that we have to protect uh, and maintain. The fact of being uh, in the middle of the Alps uh, is a source uh, of uh, um, opportunities, uh, but also um, a source of problems. But I'm convinced uh, that uh, we have the responsibility of uh, protecting this habitat uh, and also climate changes uh, will have to be uh, one of the main topics uh, to deal with. Uh, the uh, Casa Clima Agency of uh, South Tyrol is at the head of uh, action group number nine and we want to promote the efficiency uh, of uh, uh, energy transition, opening the way towards uh, a European macro region with uh, zero environmental impact. This is what we uh, we have to do immediately, and we are all convinced about that. And then we have to involve uh, municipalities in decision-making processes, because it is uh, municipalities uh, that in many sectors, uh, such as uh, uh, the building sector or the planning sector, are a, a pillar. Uh, that we have to bank on. Uh, there are various instruments, uh, for example, the model of the energy city or the convention of the mayors, uh, the uh, municipalities A++ and the European Energy Award, uh, just to mention a few of them. So let's choose the way which will uh, uh, help us uh, um, implement these uh, objectives. And then there are other very urgent topics uh, that we have to deal with. Uh, uh, sustainable tourism and uh, sustainable uh, traffic uh, and then uh, civil protection and the management uh, of uh, uh, natural um, disasters, uh, multifunctional forests. Uh, so let's try to protect uh, our habitat. Uh, and of course, mobility plays a central role. Uh, that's why um, in the working group number four, mobility, uh, entrusted to Euregio, which has the presidency of this group, uh, there has been an important uh, uh, manifesto uh, which uh, um, includes uh, the uh, objectives uh, of uh, the fourth uh, conference on mobility of use of, but this uh, manifesto contains uh, very tangible proposals so that uh, rail uh, transport becomes uh, uh, more and more efficient uh, and uh, effective, uh, above all for uh, mid to long range uh, distances. Therefore, USAP is not an empty shell. It is full of exciting ideas and uh, fruits that can already be had. Uh, there are uh, nine groups that will be able to carry forward the work we're carrying out uh, as effectively as possible. Uh, we have demonstrated that uh, cross-border cooperation uh, is not a dead letter. It can be very fruitful. The throbbing heart of our cooperation lies in the action groups that are doing a fantastic job in making use ALP uh, known outside the Alpine area. There's lots to do within the Alpine area as well, and the governance of uh, use ALP will be uh, a focus point during our presidency. We will set up a, a technical support structure uh, uh, handed down from uh, France and uh, Lombardy. We will strive, therefore, to improve cooperation 
in the Alpine area, uh, define a rotation of the presidency, and aim to involve our uh, MEPs as much as possible by means of the Friends of USALP network. Uh, yesterday and this morning, these topics were discussed during the executive group meeting. There are plenty of points on the agenda that will allow us to make major steps forward. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we should recognize the importance of uh, uh, the stars, being able to see the stars. Uh, we realize that there is a long and winding road ahead uh, to be traveled on step by step, one step at a time, and together we will certainly be able to bring about a sustainable Europe for the benefit of future generations for our young people. Uh, and let me thank uh, our youngsters. They're so instrumental. We wish to work alongside uh, young people, not only for young people. That is the challenge we are faced with. It is all the more important that young people be involved in decision-making processes in USALPA. Uh, the Young People's uh, USALPA uh, uh, group is made up of 24 uh, young individuals and there will be a Pitch Your Project competition uh, being launched uh, to uh, collect ideas uh, on what kind of future we can create for the Alpine space for Europe, because it will be the uh, young people uh, who are instrumental in this process. Ladies and gentlemen, let us cast our gazes forward, look up to the sky to see the stars, as Dante says, uh, and travel down this path with optimism and a positive attitude so we do see the stars. I am delighted to uh, open this uh, year of the Italian presidency. If we look up to the stars, we may stand and walk together side by side. I am delighted once again with my colleague to open the Italian presidency of USAP for 2022. Thank you very much indeed. Grazie ovviamente. Buongiorno, buongiorno a, tutti. a very good afternoon to you all, and thank you. Ed è, ed è un onore. It is my special honor and privilege to be here today to open the Italian presidency of USALP. Uh, I'd like to thank the governor of South Tyrol. Thank you, Mr. Compaccio, for your very uh, invigorating words here uh, at uh, the beginning of a very interesting and exciting year for Trentino, South Tyrol and the Alpine region. We are delighted to play host to today's gathering. Uh, there are many distinguished guests in our midst. Many more would have been here had it not been for uh, the pandemic. Uh, fortunately, thanks to the technology we have at our disposal nowadays, we are uh, able to uh, connect with uh, 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 friends uh, further afield. And we will be hearing from some of them in due course. Thinking back to that uh, video clip we saw a few minutes ago, uh, may I just point out that uh, uh, it saw contributions while it was being made from all our partners, uh, our institutional partners, our political partners, and uh, uh, so many members uh, of staff. I'd like to thank them because indeed their contribution is absolutely essential, especially when we think about uh, the work that is being carried forward within the action groups that were mentioned earlier by uh, Arno Compaccio too. May I take this opportunity uh, to uh, 
express my heartfelt thanks to our French friends for uh, conducting a uh, and managing a great year of uh, presidency. Uh, so let me just say merci beaucoup uh, in French to you, uh, Mr. Giroud. There have been many challenges uh, over the last few uh, weeks and months. Uh, despite this, uh, despite COVID, uh, we wish to move forward uh, with great determination uh, to showcase uh, the very best of what our local community uh, can offer, drawing upon its history, uh, uh, of course. I'd also like to uh, thank uh, President uh, Palata. Uh, um, with whom we are cooperating within the EU region. USALP uh, is indeed the backbone uh, in its own way of European cooperation. Our moderator quite rightly noted uh, just a few minutes ago uh, just how USALP's aim is to bring about concrete, tangible results for our communities. Uh, Governor Kompacha uh, touched on uh, issues such as climate change and, of course, the importance of uh, young people. USALP, uh, during previous presidencies, uh, made a specific decision uh, to involve and engage young people as much as possible since we are casting our gazes forward uh, to the future. So what we are doing now concerns my generation, uh, the, the, today's younger generations, and all future generations within the Alpine area. We've seen lots of uh, determination uh, so far, and much more we will see m moving forward. The cooperation has been very fruitful uh, and encouraging. Uh, there is already a great deal of cooperation between the provinces of Bolzano uh, and Trento, and uh, I uh, am expecting for there to be more and more intense cooperation that brings about the tangible results I was referring to uh, earlier, because there's also another issue we are to deal with. It's one of our priorities, as a matter of fact, and that is uh, the distance between the valleys, the mountain communities, and urban areas. That is a gap that we, we, need, that we need to fill. And in that regard, we need to bank on education uh, and technological uh, development. I believe that the Alpine area um, may suggest a new model in terms of lifestyle uh, and also development. And in uh, that regard, our action groups have been absolutely instrumental. During the press conference, we touched upon uh, another very important topic as uh, one of our guests was Reinhold Messner, whom I wish to thank once again, and that is the importance of safeguarding and preserving the landscape and the natural habitat. Uh, the landscape we have inherited from previous generations uh, is, of course, wonderful and spectacular. But we need to look ahead far into the future, knowing that we need to maintain uh, this crucial balance between man uh, and uh, his uh, habitat. That action is crucial it needs to be we need to work upon this by uh, making sure that communities regions and different states cooperate uh, and of course i'm including switzerland uh, among those states though it is not part of the uh, european union thanks to that co cooperation we indeed may think of becoming a beacon of change. It is indeed a great honor for me to be here today in your midst. Thank you very much indeed once again.
Thank you very much, Mr. Bizesti. Thank you very much, Governor Kompacha. Uh, we've already heard about the multitude of projects and schemes that are up and running. Um, there's a special flavor added to this since we're talking about a mountain, mountain area. Now, uh, since this macro strategy was launched in uh, Brussels, uh, and was presided over by uh, Slovene, uh, um, by Green Dealer in an sehr großes Vorhaben der Kommission. Other countries, of course. Uh, then, of course, we must mention uh, the Green Deal, um, a very ambitious project under the auspices of uh, uh, Mrs. von der Leyen, aiming to make this space carbon neutral by 2050. Uh, in Germany, of course, the Green Party uh, is pressing ahead uh, with many initiatives along those lines. This is the direction, the road we want to travel down. There is obviously a willingness to make uh, uh, Europe uh, environmentally friendly. Now, if those measures are not successful in the Alpine region, how can they be successful on a broader scale, which is why um, people are looking closely at what we are doing. Now, uh, let's see uh, what uh, our European Commissioner uh, for Cohesion and Reforms has to say. Elisa Ferreira, uh, let us hear from her. Dear colleagues, dear guests, a very good afternoon to you all. In the distinguished history of the Alpine strategy. Today we begin the new Italian presidency, ably supported by the autonomous provinces of South Tyrol and Trento. Our sincere thanks to Italy for stepping up a second time to steer this vital strategy. These last four years, both Italy and France have done double duty with the presidency and we thank you for it. These are extraordinary times and we need extraordinary leaders and extraordinary efforts also because this year we face a triple challenge. First, the recovery from COVID. This recovery must be in tune with our European and Alpine values, leaving no one behind, as we usually say, and the no place feeling forgotten. But the second challenge is the climate crisis, and this challenge is particularly evident in the Alpine regions. But solutions are also emerging in Alpine regions uh, in your spirit of cooperation with innovations, namely in hydrogen fuel and in decarbonized transport, you are fast becoming a reference for others. And third, the challenge of making the best use of our young people. I firmly believe that they are key to the recovery and the key also to the green transition. So I note with pleasure the Youth Council with 28 active members who will work hand in hand with the Italian Presidency. This also dovetails with the fact that 2022, this year, is the European Year of Youth. In rising to these three challenges, know that you are not alone. We in the Commission will support you and we have opened the door for embedding where almost 100 cohesion programs and other programs are mobilized to support your strategy and to ensure that your strategy will play a role in strengthening economic, social and territorial cohesion in Europe. As we begin a new year, a year of transition and recovery, let us make bold resolutions. First, for economic recovery in the Alpine region. Second, for a green future. And third, for our young people. This is groundbreaking work which calls out for leaders. I also urge all key players to take a turn at future presidencies. Let us establish a list from 2023 onwards. The Commission is willing to help facilitate an agreement here. This is a chance 
to become part of Alpine history. In the meantime, my best wishes to all of you in this new chapter and new year. Buon anno e buona salute a tutti. Grazie. <clears throat> So, meine Damen und Herren, ich glaube, wir sind jetzt genügend idealistisch eingestimmt äh, für unsere alpine Wanderung. Ähm, and so, ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you. Uh, what has been the practical outcome of the project you've seen so far? What has been done to uh, fight against youth unemployment? What has been done at a political level. The same question we will be addressing to um, some key players. Now, last December, uh, governors uh, um, Compacha and Bisesti uh, were in Nice uh, uh, to initiate the process of handing over the presidency uh, uh, to Italy. So let us now hear from um, Secretary of State uh, Giroud. The floor is yours, sir. Bien, Monsieur le, le Président de, de la province autonome de, de Bolzano, cher Arnaud Compacher. Distinguished le, Governor of South Tyrol, dear Arnaud Compacher. De, de Trento, uh, uh, distinguished Councillor for Education and Culture, uh, Mirko Bizesti, Governor Plata. I also wish to extend my uh, greetings to uh, Christian Barret and uh, his team and uh, thank them for the outstanding work and their outstanding accomplishments. Outstanding Outstanding accomplishments arise out of extraordinary teams. So uh, I uh, would suggest a warm round of applause to uh, that team for its accomplishments during the two year presidency. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on your behalf, uh, I would like to thank you all for the quality of uh, this uh, reception and also for uh, participating in the strategy as uh, members of the parliament, as uh, presidents of regions, uh, as uh, uh, stubborn defenders uh, of the mountains. And today, as uh, uh, myself, as a Secretary of State uh, for Rural Affairs. And thank you so much uh, for the uh, physical possibility of uh, being with you. It's not been easy because uh, um, I also had other commitments, but I wanted to reach you. I wanted to come here because uh, the city of uh, Bolzano has already hosted many other excellent uh, meetings. Uh, we had uh, 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 meetings uh, um, in the framework of the Alps Convention and was happy to come back uh, because uh, um, the uh, French uh, presidency will be completed with this uh, uh, symbolic uh, passage of the baton. Well, it's been a joint uh, presidency as uh, underlined uh, by President uh, Compach. Uh, a joint uh, presidency between uh, different uh, regions. Uh, and this uh, exercise uh, has been a very intensive period uh, of uh, cooperation uh, aimed uh, at joint action. Well, uh, the word uh, family is uh, uh, actually the, the word that comes to my mind uh, because uh, we are a family and that's the spirit of USALP. Uh, we belong to the same community. Uh, we belong to uh, the same family uh, based on values and based on uh, shared uh, values. The Alpine region uh, is working hard uh, to tackle 
Uh, climate changes, uh, there are problems uh, of uh, uh, snow uh, falling, for example, uh, and there are already visible event effects uh, of climate changes. Uh, the eco uh, systems uh, hit by these uh, changes have to be a priority of our work, uh, and USALP uh, should consider all that. Uh, and uh, be aware of uh, the changes uh, which are affecting uh, the, the various uh, alpine chains. Well, I uh, was uh, speaking about this uh, topic in another meeting, and uh, I am uh, in favor of Article 174 of the Treaty of Lisbon, Lisbon um, which is very important uh, because uh, it is an element of social, economic uh, cohesion, uh, territorial cohesion in favor of uh, less uh, populated areas in the mountains, uh, uh, like uh, the law on French mountains that was passed uh, some years ago. And the associations of Alpine uh, uh, guides, uh, for example, have uh, uh, worked uh, hard in collaboration with the uh, Italian government and the French government, uh, and USALP uh, is something uh, which is uh, very active, uh, and it is an example of uh, the um, realization of uh, this uh, article. And this is an approach uh, that uh, we want to implement uh, further, thanks to the uh, um, French presidency of the European Union. Uh, we want to uh, be aware and we want to tackle climate change. And the news alp uh, symbolizes uh, cooperation uh, between uh, the various territories. I myself uh, uh, live uh, uh, at the border between uh, Italy and France. Uh, well, uh, uh, there are some difficulties, uh, uh, difficulties of mobility, for example. And I'm aware that uh, it's a great challenge uh, to, uh, to live in these uh, places. Uh, we have two million workers, uh, cross-border workers, uh, and 20% uh, live in France. Dans des and we have to uh, be aware of all these uh, situations uh, when we devise our policies. And USALP can certainly tackle this challenge and uh, consider the uh, diversity of the territories, uh, but also um, considering the importance of uh, uh, neighborhood. Uh, so we have to establish a certain uh, continuity between the French presidency and the Italian presidency. We. Uh, in the Alps, uh, uh, wanted to have uh, a very strong uh, European uh, cooperation uh, in order to improve the quality of life of inhabitants. Uh, and, uh, it's a sort of a daily battle, uh, for example, to uh, clean uh, roads or to support uh, um, uh, schools uh, and to uh, improve uh, uh, traffic and mobility. And then uh, to uh, increase uh, uh, the protection of biodiversity and promote a circular economy and uh, renewable energies, uh, which is uh, uh, a very important topic also for the Italian presidency, because uh, uh, renewable energies are the symbol of what we need to do in our uh, regions. And then I would like also to mention the general states uh, for uh, tourism organized uh, uh, last uh, year with uh, a group of European actors in order to uh, redevise uh, tourism. And I'm very proud uh, that today it's our Italian uh, friends uh, who take up uh, the baton uh, with the symbol of the wheel uh, that we have been uh, passing on from presidency to presidency. And uh, earlier on, uh, I gave it uh, to uh, Governor Compacha and to local councillor, uh, Mr. Bizesti. I know that I can rely of, of, on you. Uh, I know that uh, there will be uh, continuity and uh, consistency between our uh, work two uh, presidencies. And then uh, um, the uh, 
words uh, mentioned uh, by the governor of Val d'Aosta are the ones uh, that uh, I want to repeat to you. We need uh, USALP uh, to have a political and democratic uh, approach uh, in order to consider and uh, um, take into consideration the diversity of uh, the areas. Uh, well, these are all important elements for Europe, and our objectives, our working groups, uh, our proposals are just uh, instruments in order to consolidate uh, uh, our policies. And we need to speak with one voice uh, in uh, Brussels, we need to speak with one voice uh, with our government. Uh, and we want to speak uh, uh, with one vo voice uh, with uh, Jacqueline uh, Moreau, uh, for example. And this uh, with a view to a greater consideration of uh, Alpine areas. We, as Alpine people, need to uh, express uh, a sort of a unity uh, going beyond the uh, different uh, areas uh, in our mountains. So uh, USALP gives us the opportunity to build this unity between uh, beyond uh, territories, uh, beyond uh, uh, regions, uh, beyond uh, nations, in order to have a unity Europe of territories, but a united Europe of territories. Uh, of course, um, I'm a strong defendant uh, of uh, Europe. I have a, a grand grandmother who was Jewish and uh, another grand grandmother who lived uh, in uh, Novagorica, uh, the current uh, Gorizia. So, people who had to flee, who had to uh, go away, who had to uh, escape. Uh, so, we need to consider uh, Europe as a place uh, for different uh, cultures, uh, diverse cultures. Uh, we are proud uh, of Alpine uh, Europe, of you, Salba, thanks to, uh, to you, Italy, thanks to Bolzano, thanks to Trento for taking up this baton. Uh, you will be the heroes uh, of uh, the European uh, policy in uh, the future. Thank you. Ja, vielen Dank, meine Damen und Herren. Wir betreten jetzt den Pfad der Very well. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Wir wollten vorhin ein. And now, let's move to the uh, states. Ist an einem technischen Problem gescheitert, das we uh, have a video message from the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So. Let's hear from the minister. Unfortunately, the minister could not be present because you may know that we are trying to vote a new president for the Republic. So we have the message of Luigi, Mr. Luigi Di Maio, who is the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Dear President Compaccio and Fugatti, dear Commissioner Elisa Ferreira, Mr. Secretary of State Giro, dear authorities and representatives of the member states of the EU strategy for the Alpine region. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to bring my greetings and encouragement for the year of Italian Presidents of the European Union strategy for the Alpine macro region, which we are inaugurating today. I would like to uh, greet uh, Secretary of State uh, Joël Giraud, from whom uh, we are receiving the baton today, and uh, I thank our French friends and partners who have ensured the presidency over the last two years. Uh, I would like to thank the presidents of the autonomous provinces of Bolzano and Trento, Arno Compacero and Maurizio Fugatti, for accepting uh, a demanding challenge uh, uh, made even more complex by the pandemic emergency. By deciding to stand as candidates, uh, the autonomous provinces of Bolzano and Trento have demonstrated their territory's interest and commitment to protecting and enhancing the Alpine region. I'm also grateful to Presidents Compacher and Fugatti for setting up the priorities and pres presidency program in a very short time. Italy is ready to take on this role uh, with the, the will to make a tangible contribution to cooperation in the Alpine region, an objective to which the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation intends to contribute in coordination with all the central, regional and provincial Italian administrations, starting with the Department for Cohesion Policies of the Presidency of the Council of Ministers. In the coming months, uh, we will therefore focus our action on the following priorities. First, uh, strengthening the governance of the strategy. This is a need uh, felt uh, by all the members, uh, and we intend to pursue it uh, through 
two major innovations. First, by adopting a predefined rotation order of the presidency, which will enable all member states uh, to know their turn in advance and plan their activities in good time. In addition, we will continue the excellent work uh, carried out so far with the European Commission and our French colleagues to ensure the quickest possible launch of the technical support structure of the strategy which will streamline procedures and administrative aspects. Once fully operational, the technical support structure with its offices in Nice and Milan will significantly facilitate the workload of the presidencies. Secondly, to raise awareness about the fragility of the Alpine ecosystem, the challenge of climate change must be tackled with determination, especially in view of its more severe impact in this region than in other areas. We will focus on energy transition and efficiency and on the role of municipalities. Thirdly, to give more space and visibility to the young citizens of the Alpine macro region by giving a fresh boost to the activities of the Strategies Youth Council. In line with Italy's proactive contribution to the Conference on the Future of Europe, here too we want to put young people at the centre of decisions concerning their future. Fourth, to seize the opportunities opened up by the programming of EU funds 2021-2027 and the link with the national recovery and resilience plans to implement the priorities of the strategy. 2022 marks the start of the 2021-2027 financial programming cycle. It is, a, it is our hope that the priorities of USALP can be implemented through inclusion, embedding in the national and regional programs of our countries and in those of European territories cooperation. USALP is the newest uh, European U Union strategy. We would like it uh, to stand out for its focus on crucial issues for the future of Europe, such as sustainable development, environmental protection, and the active participation of young people. Reaffirming the commitment of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to this end, I wish you all the best in your work, and uh, I wish the autonomous promises of Trento and Bolzano good luck. I'm certain that you will carry out the task with the efficiency, determination and enthusiasm that are your distinctive features. Thank you. Ja, wir danken dem italienischen Außenminister. Ich habe seinen Worten entnommen, dass in Nizza und in Well, many thanks to the minister. I heard that in Nice and Milan um, there will be a basis uh, or a sort of an office uh, of uh, USALP, uh, a sort of a headquarters. Uh, now, let's uh, connect uh, with the Italian Minister for Infrastructure, Enrico Giovannini, who from Rome will speak to us uh, about uh, uh, sustainable uh, mobility also. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, President Compacher, uh, Councillor Bisesti, uh, Commissioner Ferreira, Secretary of State Giraud, authorities, uh, representatives of the member states uh, of uh, the EU strategy for Alpine region, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to take part uh, in the uh, inauguration ceremony of uh, the Presidency of Italy of uh, USALP. I would like to thank the Secretary of State, Mr. Giro, for the extraordinary work uh, carried out. We just uh, heard about uh, the experiences uh, uh, which have been uh, implemented, and I would like to thank uh, Minister Di Maio and the Ministry for Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation for their uh, action of uh, coordination. I would like to thank uh, the presidents uh, of the uh, autonomous provinces, uh, Mr. Compacher and Mr. Uh, Fugatti, whom we, uh, we often meet uh, to speak about uh, projects about those areas and also for organizing this event. Italy has taken up the presidency of USALP by being aware of the importance of the challenges uh, which uh, uh, affect uh, the uh, Alpine region. As the moderator said, 
we uh, changed uh, the name of the ministry into sustainable mobility and infrastructure uh, because uh, both things have to be sustainable. And we are perfectly in line with the European strategy and uh, with the many projects uh, started by the Alpine region. Mi piace molto ricordare eh, la, eh, il Consiglio dei Giovani come è stato... I would like to recall also the Youth Council. Lo dico perché la partecipazione degli stakeholder, in particolare delle um, classi più giovani... The involvement of all stakeholders, uh, in particular of young people, is fundamental in order to uh, implement and to use uh, the investments uh, uh, in a better way. Uh, because uh, uh, this will have to benefit uh, young people uh, and the uh, challenges ahead uh, require coordinated uh, answers and reactions, uh, in particular the issue of mobility, the issue of infra infrastructure um, has to do with the need uh, to safeguard uh, the uh, environmental um, characteristics of the region and this in order also to defend uh, the various uh, ecosystems. Uh, now from this viewpoint uh, the new guidelines uh, approved uh, to define a sustainable infrastructure go in that direction so the new projects uh, will have to look uh, not only at economic uh, repercussions but also social and environmental consequences uh, in a framework uh, of uh, uh, sustainable development uh, uh, which uh, is at the basis of the European Great Deal uh, and uh, uh, which is also at the basis of uh, uh, next generation EU. Now, there is another challenge for the next 10 years, uh, that is to complete uh, the uh, corridors uh, which have been recently uh, modified, and Italy, uh, by the way, uh, obtained two important uh, recognitions, uh, including the acknowledgement of the Adriatic uh, Railway as uh, one of the main uh, uh, components uh, of the uh, extended uh, core of uh, the uh, railway network. Uh, and then we need to tackle the repercussions uh, that uh, uh, we will have uh, as a consequence of a, great, of a greater use uh, of the railway. So we are investing uh, thanks to Next Generation EU, but also thanks to other funds. So we want to transform our system of mobility. Now, the National Plan of uh, Resilience and Recovery um, includes about uh, 60 billion uh, euros, and then uh, we added another 36 uh, billion of investments, uh, which uh, um, together with other funds, uh, will uh, uh, lead to an investment of about 100 billion euros uh, in uh, infrastructure, uh, billion euros, uh, um, and this uh, will relate to uh, local public transport, uh, railway transport, uh, and other issues. And these uh, projects will involve other use uh, out countries. So let us learn from the best practices that have been established. The Italian presidency in that regard will have the important task of uh, identifying these best practices uh, to disseminate elsewhere. Another important challenge lies in uh, the use of uh, heavy goods vehicles uh, for shipping purposes we need to move towards much more sustainable uh, mobility and there are specific projects to be implemented in the Bolzano and Trento areas that uh, uh, are in line with this and I'm not only referring to the Brenner uh, corridor we also need to encourage intermodality uh, as much as possible the Brenner Corridor will see significant investments in terms of digitalization. 
thanks to these investments, traffic will be regulated much more efficiently and effectively. And we will also uh, be able to avoid inconveniences and disruptions uh, that are brought about by traffic congestion. We will go about this by working with other areas such as uh, Tyrol, uh, with whom we are uh, working, though our different, though our uh, views may differ, we continue to cooperate. And then the issue of uh, hydrogen there will be an exchange of best practices and uh, a drafting of a, uh, a common approach, common goals, uh, to facilitate investments in the uh, development of uh, uh, this fuel. I do believe that the work carried out under the edges of EOSALP will prove valuable in terms of shared objectives and uh, common uh, decisions. I wish the autonomous provinces of Bolzano and Trento, as well as all the other uh, parties, the other countries, uh, the social and uh, economic parties too, um, a very, very successful uh, experience during the Italian presidency. I'm confident the results that will emerge will be of benefit across the board. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Giovannini. Thank you very much once again. Now, I believe that uh, uh, we are now ready for a richly deserved uh, break and for a musical interlude. Here we have uh, five musicians from the Haydn Orchestra who will be playing uh, a very celebrated melody by uh, uh, Brecht. Um, And now over to the Haydn Ensemble.
Thank you very much. Many thanks to the Haydn Orchestra Quintet. These discounts were particularly agreeable, I'd like to say. Now let us uh, move on to uh, a very solemn moment, and that is uh, the handing over of the presidency to uh, Italy. So may I now call upon uh, Secretary of State uh, Giraud, uh, Governor Compaccia and Councillor Besetti. Ladies and gentlemen, USALP uh, embodies the idea of Alpine cooperation uh, something that is expressed in a special uh, wheel that was uh, uncovered uh, some time ago near Ljubljana. The wheel is actually 5,200 years old, so the wheel is more uh, or, or less a contemporary of uh, if You can see uh, that there is a section missing here uh, that was added uh, thanks to a, a sketch that was put together by uh, a, a pioneer of, of stage travel from uh, Slovenia. He had imagined a space station uh, and uh, had suggested the idea that the Alps may be the starting point for that particular adventure. He therefore sketched out uh, what he had in mind, and so the missing section of this wheel uh, was, uh, draws upon that idea. And this wheel uh, is uh, something that symbolizes uh, tradition, uh, Alpine tradition, and the future. So now Secretary of State Giraud will now hand over this wheel to Governor Compacha, who will in turn pass it on to his um, friend from uh, Turin, Mr. Uh, Councillor Besetti. So, jetzt ist es offiziell das Schicksal der Äußerung. Very well. It is now official. Eusalp is well and truly in the hands uh, of the provinces of Trento and Bolzano, uh, as it is in the hands of uh, each and every one of us uh, here in the Alps. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let us move on to our next section. Many of the topics uh, that um, we've touched upon uh, are also the object of a work by UNESCO. Uh, you will know that the uh, Alps are uh, considered uh, the universal heritage uh, of uh, mankind. Uh, the people of the Alps are part of this universal heritage and uh, one distinguished member of uh, this community is uh, Reinhold Messner, an author, former member of the European uh, Parliament, an alpha male, an alpine uh, alpha male as he was once described. Reinhold Messner is indeed someone who has been able to demonstrate very clearly uh, how 
one can become more and more uh, aware of how to inhabit the Alpine space in the light uh, of his experiences. Uh, one of his messages is indeed that of striking a balance between uh, development and uh, maintaining roots and traditions. I attended uh, not so long ago a meeting where this very topic was uh, discussed, how we may go about the energy transition uh, that is being so discussed uh, in many different locations. Uh, Reinhold Messer is uh, used to climbing to right up to the top of a mountain, but he has his feet firmly on the ground. He is here to answer the question, what is the future of the Alps? The floor is yours, Reinhold Messner. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. I would like to uh, thank Governor Kompacz uh, and all the distinguished authorities here and further uh, afield, and I wish to greet you all. I wish to take you uh, on a journey uh, that will allow us to uh, touch upon some very um, touching uh, topics, heavenly topics, if you like. Uh, I have been asked to answer that question. What is the future of the Alps? Uh, the Alps uh, came about millions of years ago as the African continent moved towards uh, Europe. And the result of that uh, movement was the um, raising uh, of the Earth's crust and the birth, if you like, uh, of these mountains. Now, all Europeans uh, can travel to the Alps quite easily. The Alps are regarded as an important reservoir uh, for um, human beings, for agricultural purposes, and the Alps are fascinating. And this can be uh, confirmed by uh, all those who uh, have ever seen the Alps. Uh, in the Andes and in the Himalayas, uh, we practice uh, alpine mountain climb, mountaineering as we say. Um, and uh, that has then brought about a certain flow of uh, tourists to uh, these locations. Now, why is it that people find the Alps so fascinating? Before the Industrial Revolution and the uh, Enlightenment, uh, the Alps perhaps brought about some kind of fear, instilled fear in whoever, uh, whomever beholded them. Uh, up until a certain point, there were very few people venturing up into uh, the mountains. Um, and I'm referring not only to the mountain you can see here behind me, the uh, Cervino, but also to other uh, much smaller mountains. In the past, the Alps were more of a barrier, a hindrance, uh, an obstruction, a source of fear than anything else. Uh, we've had to build uh, specific infrastructures to be able uh, to uh, survive initially and then to uh, really dwell in the Alps and then offer tourists uh, um, better uh, conditions. These infrastructures that have made these mountains more accessible, one example you can hear you can see here a scenic point to view the uh, three peaks uh, of uh, Lavaredo. And uh, uh, there is a certain peace and quiet uh, in this particular spot. Uh, the municipality of uh, Auronzo has also set up a much more chaotic point uh, to which thousands of people flock every single day. Uh, they get to the very foot of these uh, mountains. And uh, uh, it's worse than a shopping mall or a shopping center because uh, there are 
uh, crowds uh, assembling there, and it's a kind of invasion of this of what would otherwise be a very peaceful space. For years and years and years, I've been asking the municipality of Auronzo to close off that access point and to organize uh, access from um, further down uh, in the valley. But uh, alas, hitherto I've not been successful and my calls have fallen upon deaf ears. I'm sure that the municipality of Auronzo would have nothing to lose and everything to gain if they were uh, to take on board my idea. In any case, what is precious in the Alps is the landscape. It's priceless. It is a kind of heritage without which the future of the Alps would be inconceivable. Eight or nine thousand years ago, the first human dwellings uh, were seen. They were uh, shepherds and uh, uh, farmers. Uh, hunter-gatherers, if you like. And that was a time uh, uh, in which it seems uh, uh, temperatures were also increasing, uh, were, you know, increasing on planet Earth, uh, and there was a certain degree of uh, melting in the glaciers, so some kind of climate change. Uh, of course, uh, at the time, it was not due to um, uh, fossil fuels. Uh, that goes without saying, of course. Uh, nowadays, the situation is completely different. Uh, and I often wonder whether we have the wherewithal to bring about change in that regard. Now, let's think back to the uh, mountain hunter Utsi. What kind of habitat did he live in at the time? It would be very difficult uh, to think uh, that Ertzi was aware of the issue of preserving the uh, landscape. In the community where I live, there have been many important archaeological findings um, uh, that seem to suggest that bonfires were lit for the people that inhabited that area. Now, as was said earlier, I have my feet firmly on the ground. Uh, I like to um, get informed before I move. And what I uh, managed to build is this house here. It's actually uh, in the rock. And in two or three years' time, it will become invisible because what is actually the roof will be covered by vegetation and other materials. You may ask, where do you get your uh, electricity uh, and uh, how will you get your light? Well, the light will come from the sun and the energy will come from the sun because the orientation of this building is such that in wintertime too, uh, there will be a reflection of sunlight from the rock and thanks to the insulation on, on the roof, there will be no need for air conditioning. Be, uh, and that, of course, will allow the indoor environment to be uh, cool and perfectly uh, inhabitable. So uh, there are plenty of ways we can build sustainably uh, and to preserve our landscapes by doing so. So in the mountains, uh, there are these rocks uh, that you can uh, build behind, uh, and uh, yet uh, it is very rare for these projects to be implemented. Uh, but if we want to continue to uh, cementify our landscape, well, we will miss it, we will lose it, uh, because the landscape uh, is made uh, of the uh, wild uh, soul uh, of the Alps uh, and the more rural uh, side uh, of it, uh, which uh, has been uh, um, forged uh, by thousands and thousands of years uh, of human presence. In the past, uh, various materials were used, uh, wood uh, um, and uh, um, clay and sand. Uh, and today, different materials uh, are used. But in my opinion, we should uh, work uh, um, in order to use uh, uh, local materials uh, so that we can spare uh, the energy needed to transport uh, these materials. And then there is another important point. Uh, we should try and uh, exploit uh, the presence of slopes uh, and rocks uh, 
without spoiling the landscape. Well, personally, I'm also uh, uh, in favor of uh, um, working in the Alps at high levels. Uh, well, uh, the Alps also include Milan, Turin, and Zurich, but when I speak about the Alps, uh, I mean the mountains, I mean uh, higher mountains. Uh, well, the Alps uh, uh, should be inhabited, in my opinion, but uh, if we were able or if we uh, were to build uh, uh, many uh, windmills in the in the Alps, well, we would uh, uh, we would uh, certainly sort of disfigure uh, the Alps. Uh, so I would like to uh, warn you: let's uh, avoid. Uh, uh, distributing uh, uh, windmills in the Alps, uh, we are certainly justified in the plains, uh, but not uh, in the mountains, uh, where we have to defend the value, the um, uh, beauty of this landscape. Uh, the landscape is a resource uh, because uh, you can carry out uh, various uh, rural, uh, rural activities, but also because uh, they are a place uh, for uh, um, entertainment uh, and for relaxing. And uh, the Alps have been used uh, now for uh, seven or eight thousand years, and I'm referring uh, to uh, meadows, uh, uh, high-level meadows, uh, which, in my opinion, uh, are uh, really a, a very important heritage, uh, certainly. When we try to make uh, uh, landscapes uh, uh, or, or Alps accessible, we transformed uh, uh, Alps uh, into uh, mountains uh, which have been sort of cementified uh, uh, sometimes more and sometimes uh, less. Uh, there are many uh, roads uh, which uh, get into the heart of the Dolomites. Uh, and those who uh, get there, well, apart from having a very bad impression of the Alps, uh, well, they also cause a damage uh, to the landscape. So, uh, in my opinion, my personal opinion is that uh, uh, we should let uh, tourists uh, get to the parking spaces of the hotels uh, and uh, in that moment uh, ask them to walk uh, and if they cannot walk uh, uh, let them uh, go around uh, uh, by means of uh, uh, public means of transport uh, so in my opinion uh, local authorities uh, should not allow tourists uh, to use their cars uh, to get uh, to certain spaces places in the Alps. Uh, we have uh, uh, already uh, too many cable cars uh, and other um, uh, important uh, uh, means of pub public means of transport. Uh, otherwise, uh, we will really uh, lose this uh, uh, landscape. Well, today the Alps are extremely uh, exploited, uh, also at high uh, levels. Uh, uh, you can uh, uh, see uh, antennas, for example. Okay. Uh, in the past, uh, not even crosses were placed, uh, but simply a stone was placed there to mark uh, the uh, arrival of a mountaineer. And we also note uh, that in the Alps uh, there is uh, an exodus from the marginal areas uh, and uh, urban centers are growing uh, while uh, the most uh, uh, marginal areas uh, are uh, losing inhabitants. Uh, it's right for, for uh, cities like Bolzano to grow, but not to the expenses uh, uh, of uh, the uh, peripheral areas. Uh, um, also, uh, uh, marginal areas uh, should be uh, maintained uh, and uh, protected. We live in a place uh, where uh, we don't have so 
big uh, distances, uh, and uh, for thousands of years we have known uh, that uh, distances are small. And this also led uh, to uh, uh, very high skills in the use of uh, the territories. Uh, uh, for example, here, 1,200 uh, meters, uh, and despite the high level, despite the altitude, uh, uh, a very important wine growing industry. This is something uh, very peculiar of South Tyrol. And uh, mountaineering started uh, with uh, the Mont Blanc uh, um, climbs uh, in uh, 1700. Uh, at the beginning, uh, mountaineers uh, went to uh, up to 3,000 meters, and it was uh, mainly uh, English uh, mountaineers uh, uh, who started to climb uh, the mountains. Uh, and so there was that uh, first approach uh, to the mountains. And after the first climbs, uh, uh, people started to look for, most, uh, for more uh, difficult uh, areas. Uh, and then uh, uh, free climbing activities. Uh, and then uh, other uh, types of infrastructure and uh, 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 mountaineering of the past uh, has been transformed uh, into tourism. Well, the Alps uh, can be reached uh, uh, by many areas in Europe, and they are the place of recreation uh, uh, per excellence. Uh, uh, so we should not forget that this uh, makes it turns the Alps into something very precious. Uh, it is an asset uh, that we make available to uh, city dwellers, uh, apart from the water that we give to the plains. Uh, well, we should uh, uh, we should know that uh, we will continue to do that also in 50, 100 years. Uh, and let's not forget uh, the charm uh, coming from the mountains. Earlier on, I showed you the Cervino mountain, which is the symbol of many other mountains, uh, which uh, have always uh, released uh, this uh, uh, charm. Louis Trenker uh, uh, made a famous uh, film, uh, The Mountain Calls, uh, and uh, uh, the Alps uh, uh, are calling us. Uh, well, personally, I've never heard uh, the mountains call, uh, although I uh, went uh, a lot in the mountains. Uh, well, apart from the calling, uh, I like the, the charm, uh, the uh, fascination expressed uh, by, um, by the mountains. Uh, and uh, by, by that, I mean the fact that we feel small uh, as compared to the mountains. The Alps uh, were made millions and millions of years ago, but they are falling to pieces. And this dust uh, which uh, comes away from the mountains uh, is then uh, watered down uh, to the valleys, uh, to the plains, uh, and perhaps uh, it uh, will uh, create new mountains. So nothing is uh, created and nothing is uh, destroyed. Uh, there is simple, simply a sort of a transfer from one place to the other. And this, and the tension that you uh, feel when you go up uh, to a mountain top uh, make us feel small. Uh, reducing our feeling uh, uh, of uh, uh, being a sort of uh, uh, people with superpowers. Uh, so slowly and slowly, in the course of history, people have uh, climbed the mountains. Uh, now in the, in the Alps, we also have Indian people come in uh, if they can afford it. Uh, so for people who never saw any snow or ice, uh, well, that's a very fascinating experience. Uh, and another important point uh, is that we should all understand uh, that uh, in the Alps, uh, we need to continue to live, work, and uh, feel human beings. Uh, Never forgetting that the Alps have two souls, the wild one and the human one. There is one part of the Alps where people have been living and working for thousands of years. Well, they didn't live in the valleys, in the plains, but they lived high up in the mountains. 
da gab es natürlich auch also because in the uh, valleys uh, there were problems of uh, insects uh, uh, and other pandemics uh, so right from the start uh, people human beings uh, uh, went up to 1,000, 2,000 meters uh, where they developed uh, their cultures, uh, for example, alpine agriculture. Uh, it's enough to mention many products, uh, for example, berries, uh, mushrooms. Uh, and about uh, 100, 150 years ago, nobody would have thought uh, that uh, Thanks to tourism, it would be possible to have a new resource, and this resource, this economic resource, has developed. And um, people have uh, tried to go up and up the mountains and build uh, infrastructure, and many things were lost. Well. I don't want to say that all the cableways uh, should be destroyed. Uh, they are already there, and we should uh, maintain them. But it is absurd uh, to invest uh, more and more to go even higher, even though we have uh, overheating and uh, other climate problems. Uh, well, we should find different proposals uh, to uh, let people uh, go in the mountains uh, with uh, uh, a different approach. Well, you don't need to be a geologist uh, to understand uh, how the Alps uh, were developed. Uh, you don't need to be an anthropologist. Uh, it's enough uh, to walk in the Dolomites uh, to see fossil uh, the uh, Nautilus uh, uh, fossils, uh, for example. And this uh, shows uh, how the Alps uh, were uh, developed uh, 600 million years ago. These uh, uh, mountains uh, were developed. Uh, um, they were the bottom of a large ocean. And then uh, slowly and slowly, with the uh, increase of the Alpine crest, uh, these uh, uh, lands uh, emerged uh, and then uh, um, have turned into peaks uh, uh, which are as high as uh, 4,000 meters. So if you walk around uh, and uh, um, see all these uh, things, uh, well, you may realize uh, that uh, peasants uh, in the centuries uh, have conquered uh, uh, the land uh, meter after meter uh, by um, sort of conquering new grasslands, uh, new pastures. Uh, well, a feature of our uh, farms in the Alps uh, is that of uh, uh, being uh, uh, isolated uh, houses uh, which can be seen and uh, 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 smelled uh, uh, from far away. And this uh, tells us a lot about the history of the Alps. Uh, also in terms of architecture, over the centuries, uh, uh, the local resources uh, have been used uh, and uh, perfect houses have been built uh, thanks to the uh, use of local stones and uh, wood uh, and uh, clay uh, taken from the rivers. And then these uh, houses uh, have been uh, uh, built. So few resources were used, uh, very little energy. And this uh, uh, green lung, so to speak, of the Alps uh, has, has been preserved. Uh, and uh, only the quantity of wood uh, necessary was uh, uh, taken uh, by the various uh, uh, peasants. Uh, so this uh, instinct uh, of uh, uh, sustainability is fundamental, and it has always characterized uh, the alpine uh, populations. Uh, and we have to be aware of that. Uh, I, myself, uh, have become a farmer. Well, uh, I'm also a farmer. 
in particular on uh, Und weil ich sehen wollte, wie das funktioniert. A farmer of uh, uh, animals, and uh, uh, I wanted to know how the things uh, uh, worked. I wanted to try it, uh, and I know uh, how important uh, grasslands uh, uh, are. Because if we don't use these alpine uh, grasslands in the end, uh, we will have uh, carcification, uh, we will have uh, erosion of the soil, uh, uh, thus uh, uh, creating problems uh, to the Alps uh, and also to people. Well, the real farmer is a person who wants to sell products uh, and live of that, uh, but um, uh, they also have this uh, uh, task, uh, the task of defending uh, and protecting the landscape. So it is fundamental to have this double role of farmers. Uh, farmers are uh, landscape uh, custodians uh, um, and they should be involved in various uh, uh, um, activities. Well, agritourism is a very important activity, but uh, uh, big uh, hotel uh, owners uh, are not really happy about the fact that uh, farmers uh, um, give out uh, their uh, houses uh, or rent their houses. Uh, and it is, in fact, uh, these mountain farmers uh, that help uh, big uh, hotel uh, owners uh, maintain uh, these uh, assets, uh, these uh, resources. So that's why we should have a policy in favor of uh, high altitude uh, farming. Another problem uh, that uh, we have in the Alps is uh, uh, traffic, is mobility. The Alps are a place of uh, a transition from north to south and also from east to west. If you uh, pass through the Brenner Pass in summer, well, you may be aware of what that means. Uh, there may have there may be traffic jams uh, which last uh, hours, and with the base tunnel of the Brenner, hopefully the situation will improve. Uh, but still today. Thanks uh, to more intelligence, uh, it would be possible to manage the problem uh, because the Alps uh, are also a, a climate uh, a place of alarm, but uh, they are also a place of uh, life uh, for us uh, as uh, mountaineers. Uh, so, over-tourism has become a problem, but in my opinion, the word is wrong. During the pandemic, I uh, went out for about uh, 50 walks, uh, and I never met anybody. Well, partly it was forbidden to go out of uh, one's own house uh, because uh, we had this uh, lockdown period. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, I saw a helicopter flying over me to check uh, what was happening. Well, apart from that, uh, uh, excessive tourism is uh, present uh, at the southern base uh, of the three peaks, uh, but not uh, north of them. Uh, why so? Well, there's an access route to the uh, north and uh, uh, over tourism in the southern part of the Alps. So we need to manage the process in an orderly fashion and avoid this overcrowding in some particular areas. There are some situations that are simply unacceptable um, where people will uh, leave the large urban areas where there is traffic, pollution, uh, they then travel to the mountains uh, for a re regeneration uh, and in search of uh, peace of mind. But what do they find? What do they see? Something that possibly is even worse than what you will see in the center of Milan uh, or Munich. The solution, in actual fact, is simple. We should restrict private vehicles from accessing certain part of the Alps. It's the same as in uh, uh, 
city areas where some areas are off limits uh, to traffic and I wonder why uh, we've not yet been able to establish this not only in South Tyrol but uh, also elsewhere the same idea could be implemented there in other words let people come there's nothing wrong with that uh, uh, let them come by train or by other means but once they've reached their destination people are to uh, park and no longer use their private means of transport, their private vehicles, because we have more than enough public transport infrastructures. And then at the end of their holidays, they are very welcome to jump back into their cars and then uh, leave the area, of course. That is how we can make sure uh, that uh, mobility is sustainable uh, in these holiday areas, be it uh, high up in the mountains, uh, nearby the lakes, or uh, at other locations. But we need those political decisions, that political will uh, that so far uh, has not been forthcoming. Uh, and these issues should be entrusted not to the politicians, they're not the experts, but to the experts of mobility in those areas. Uh, then we should also look at the distribution uh, of the, these traffic flows uh, to avoid any peak times. There are rush hours, would you believe? Uh, so if we were able to even out these flows, uh, there will be no rush hours or no peak periods which should be good news for the mountains. There would be positive repercussions also uh, for uh, employment levels, for example. If someone is working at a, a, a hotel and they get three months uh, off because the hotel is closed, uh, then that very same uh, person uh, will obviously have to adjust their uh, work time uh, depending on uh, how many holiday makers come along. In a nutshell, if we succeed in managing the processes, as I was saying, we can even out uh, uh, the uh, rush hours and the peak periods, and we can also uh, make sure that uh, uh, the actual presence of the holiday makers is spread out as evenly as possible across the area. Now, here you can see some uh, other slides, very interesting ones. Let me touch upon another issue. Uh, which I'm not sure Els Alper can solve as a matter of fact, and that is uh, the topic of uh, wolves. It's something that I would like to touch upon at the cost of uh, annoying someone. Now, uh, in these uh, mountain pastures, you will find uh, a very, very specific uh, features. For example, uh, in the Furnes uh, Valley, there are uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, um, thousands of square meters of uh, uh, alpine pastures that can't be fenced off. Uh, there are areas where uh, sheep need to be brought so that they can uh, graze, of course. Uh, they have a right to be there. Now, there are wolves uh, that will kill 10 uh, or, or so sheep per night. And if the shepherd sees that uh, he has lost uh, 10 of these sheep overnight, they will uh, campaign against the presence of wolves. But wolves have every right to survive. I personally believe that they would be much better off in Siberia, for example, but in any case, uh, if we uh, allow these uh, wolves uh, to continue uh, to prosper and to dwell in these uh, mountain areas, I, I wonder what will happen in the future. So we need to be uh, consistent in the plains and uh, uh, in the uh, towns that are located uh, by the mountains. Of course, you'll find uh, a greater number of uh, people living in those areas. 
Voraussetzung geht, Wolf oder nicht Wolf. Um, and their uh, importance as uh, voters is much higher. There are much more, many more of them, uh, many more people in these areas. So their, their votes perhaps are much more consistent than the votes of a few uh, mountain uh, farmers. Uh, Wolves uh, pose a threat to some activities uh, in the mountain areas, and I don't think that a bureaucrat in Rome or Brussels uh, should decide on these issues. And in saying that, I realize I'm being very controversial and perhaps making enemies. The fact is uh, uh, that uh, we need to look at the interests of everyone, including uh, these dozens of uh, uh, farmers in, in the mountains that are uh, afraid of these wolves. But in any case, uh, I believe that someone was uh, about to start clapping. Um, well, so be it. Uh, I'm sure that there will be criticism leveled against me uh, by the time we reach this evening. In any case, as I was saying, the Alps are a, uh, a lung uh, for this area. They are incontaminated uh, areas. Look at this picture of uh, the uh, Susie pasture uh, with the mountains uh, in the background. This pasture is said to be the largest one in Europe, the Susie pasture. There are people coming from Paris, from uh, Munich and elsewhere uh, to admire the beauty of these landscapes. And we need these holiday makers, we need these tourists. Uh, there are Obviously, other activities are also important for the local uh, economy. Uh, but we need uh, these holiday makers if we wish to guarantee the survival of the people dwelling in these areas. Now, just look at these terraces. Look where uh, the vineyards are located, the orchards uh, are located. This is the product of uh, hundreds and hundreds of years of uh, farming and agricultural activities. So I wish to ask you, my use up friends, to uh, prevail on your uh, national governments, your regional governments, uh, to look at the importance of uh, uh, these areas. Now, I wonder whether you've ever heard of the uh, closed farmhouse. Uh, it's a specific uh, it's a specific arrangement in South Tyrol to guarantee uh, the ordinary, or, uh, orderly uh, inheritance and bequeathing of a mountain property. It has been uh, very successful in preserving uh, agricultural uh, and farming activity uh, in this area. Because if these were properties were carved up and farmed out to, uh, no pun intended, to the various relatives uh, for inheritance purposes, then none of the um, uh, recipients by themselves will be able to make uh, uh, this business a viable business and therefore it couldn't fund their um, uh, livelihoods, it couldn't make them a living. Uh, and of course, how can I ask uh, a mountain farmer to carry on uh, with his or her business uh, if they cannot reach the areas they're interested in working in uh, by means of a, uh, a vehicle. So this means that there unfortunately has been an exodus from many mountain areas, especially where uh, proper roads have not been built. There have been many examples of this, especially in the western parts of the Alps, where entire villages have been abandoned. Unfortunately, many other things have been lost, uh, um, certain skills, certain trades. Now, before I leave you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me turn very quickly to something which is very close to my heart, and that is uh, the uh, discourse that there is on these mountain areas, the narrative that there is. 
a few years ago, I started uh, thinking about this. I felt a certain kind of curiosity uh, that also came out of a responsibility uh, that I felt uh, to safeguard uh, areas uh, that I'd, I'd invested in uh, and also to preserve uh, certain areas where I had spent my uh, childhood. And I'm referring to a group of museums, the Messner Mountain Museums, uh, the first one of which was erected here uh, uh, on the site of a military uh, installation uh, dating back to uh, World War One. It's not very far from uh, Cortina. There wasn't much military activity going on there, but the truth is that it's a very evocative place. Uh, the installation was abandoned many decades before I took an interest there. So there's nothing uh, that is war-related. It's all about peace and harmony, the essence of mountain dwelling. And it is thanks to this location that uh, um, I've made a feeble attempt to tell the story of living in the mountains. My daughter, as a matter of fact, uh, is running this particular museum at the moment. And I obviously hope that uh, uh, this endeavor uh, will carry on into the future. Other similar installations could be uh, set up to tell the story of uh, uh, mountain dwellers. Uh, and uh, not far from uh, Sesto Pusteria, I found an ideal location, a, um, an abandoned uh, cable car station uphill. And uh, again, it would have had to be uh, demolished probably and uh, the resulting material would have had to be brought uh, downhill into the valley. I decided to embark on another project, in other words, uh, to convert uh, this particular uh, location into a kind of uh, slow and relaxed tourism location and there we set up uh, another museum in a enchanting uh, landscape. Uh, the beauty of the surroundings really cannot be under, underestimated or understated. We set up a beautiful museum in equally beautiful surroundings where uh, I tell this, another story uh, that is central uh, to uh, my own experience, the, the story of mountains and rock. So this is another part of the uh, project. The Louvre uh, <laughs> belongs to Paris and that's where it should say. But if you want to set up a mountain museum, it's in the mountains that um, a museum of that kind should be uh, built. This project has uh, demonstrated that the model uh, can indeed uh, function uh, effectively. Now, if that project had been doomed, I would have uh, gone bankrupt. But that fortunately has not been the case because mounting tourism is growing. And I'm not here to say that skiing uh, is going downhill, again, no pun intended. Uh, but, but perhaps it's not as popular uh, as uh, it once was. I'm very uh, happy to have been able to conduct this experiment, this test in South Tyrol, and I'm grateful to all the people who have helped me. I've um, accomplished this without any uh, particular um, st state or regional financial aid. Uh, the idea has proved successful. I haven't destroyed anything. I've only used um, resources that were already there, perhaps changing uh, their use and their destination. Now, look at this destination, for example. Had I not purchased these buildings, perhaps they would have collapsed and crumbled. And here, I tell the story of the sacred nature of the uh, mountains. 
Experts tell me that the Simulan uh, mountain that you can see uh, here was uh, worshipped as if it were a god. And there too, I have built another one of my museums. Uh, here you can see the ice museum near the Ortlis uh, mountains. Once again, it is underground. Uh, the landscape has not been affected uh, in any way whatsoever. In 200 years, uh, I can uh, safely say that this glacier, uh, um, unfortunately, will no longer exist because it is located at such an altitude uh, uh, that uh, uh, most of it will have melted away. This is the idea uh, I am pursuing. Let us celebrate the beauty of the mountains by bringing that beauty uh, inside these uh, museum locations. In the next few uh, decades, uh, I'm sure that many other um, locations of this kind uh, will be erected, will be built to tell the story of these mountains. I believe that we need to give people the opportunity to see for themselves. And if they cannot really understand the beauty of the surroundings, there has to be someone that tells them that story. This will uh, guarantee the livelihood of these locations. If we help the holiday makers understand and really perceive the charm of the location they are in. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much indeed, Reinhold Messner. Let me take back uh, what, I said, what I was saying uh, earlier. Uh, you said, uh, Mr. Messner, that mountains have some kind of charm that is a story that is to be told. If we look at the Alpine space from a philosoph philosophical point of view, uh, I'm reminding of Nietzsche, uh, who said that we should believe uh, uh, no thought that is not born in an outdoor environment. And Reinhold Messner is the very embodiment of that idea. Very well. Uh, now it is time for another very short break. Over to the Haydn Orchestra Quintet once again for a polka, I understand. Over to you.
Vielen Dank dem Haydn Ensemble. Very well. Thank you to the Haydn Orchestra. Now, if you listened uh, to it, uh, you may have heard uh, that the spirit of innovation is also present in this uh, music, which is uh, normally very traditional, but it is a tradition which grows and develops. 